One more kill and victory is ours. Hi all, this is Skate, and this video is a little bit different to what I usually put up. This is a different game. This is Armored Warfare Assault. It's a game which is currently in soft launch for mobile. It's going through full release through this month of February, and it should be live in every country by the end of the month. Now for a small YouTube channel, I get a surprising amount of emails asking me if I'd like to test this mobile game, or that mobile game, or the occasional PC game thrown in. And they've never appealed to me, it's usually different variants of something like Candy Crush ripoffs, which just don't appeal. Not really my cup of tea. And then I had an email from my.com, and my.com said they are making Armored Warfare Assault, a mobile version basically of Armored Warfare. And that sparked my interest, so I had to have a go. So of course I replied with, yeah, I'll have a go while it's in test please. And here it is. So I thought I'd put up a review on the channel, give you my thoughts on the game, and, well, show you some footage so you can see for yourself. Now, obviously, this channel is predominantly dedicated to World of Tank Splits, which is my favourite game. So when a game like this comes into the market, you would naturally think oh, this is going to be direct competition. So I had to check it out and have a nose, and here is pretty much my review of the game. First off, it's not direct competition. It is in terms of what sort of game it is, however you'll notice respawn functions on the screen, something World of Tanks Blitz does not have, because the gameplay on this is different. Think World of Tanks Blitz Supremacy, which as you can see caps A, B and C at the top. Now cross that with Call of Duty Black Ops Online Multiplayer. Get yourself in a tank, and you pretty much have Armored Warfare Assault. So compared to Blitz, it is very, very arcadey. However, that's not directly a horrifically bad thing. In fact, it's kind of flat-out hysterical fun. I'm driving at the moment the M41 Walker Bulldog, which is the Tier 1 tank everybody gets when they start the game. And at the top of the screen, you'll see two Big bars counting at points. Aim of the game is as simple as get your bar to 800 points before the enemy team does. You do that by killing other tanks and capping bases. Capping bases being the quickest way of doing it. And what they've effectively done is taken Armored Warfare from PC and make it more arcadey for the mobile version. Example right now. Your tank bounces over jumps. <laughs> But you've still got all the mechanics, um, you've got penetration values, and you've got heavy armoured tanks, you've got modules, you've got all of that stuff still. And for anyone who's never played Armoured Warfare, and I imagine that's a lot of people who are watching this because it's a predominantly World of Tanks Blitz channel, you can't repair your tracks. Once your track is out, you'll see there's no repair modules anywhere on the screen. So once your track's out, it's out for say 7 to 10 seconds, depending on the tank, depending on your crew. But that doesn't mean game over, because you're going to respawn, and when you respawn, you respawn with full ammo again, and full hit points again. And if you look, I'm doing like 40 damage a shot right now to that T92. I've only got 200 hit points myself. Well, I'm about to have less, because I'm going to jump off the side of a plane just to see if it does damage, or if it bounces. It bounced and did damage. But <laughs> you can take out enemy tanks very, very quickly. But they're just going to respawn. And when they do respawn, they could come back, kill you, and get themselves a nice revenge medal, because that's a mechanic within the game. In terms of respawning, you can choose to respawn back at the original spawn point from the start of the game, or if you have captured A or C, you can respawn back at those locations. You can't respawn back into B if you've captured that one, because, well, that gives an unfair advantage spawning smack bang into the middle of the map. Then the other thing you need to consider... This I'm playing at now is Tier 1. Now, at Tier 1 you can penetrate anything with anything pretty much. So things like the different penetrations, different types of ammo. There are rockets on here like the T-49A by the way, which can be quite frustrating. But all the armor is kind of irrelevant at Tier 1. It's only more apparent between the different classes as you start to go higher and higher up. 
For example, a T-54 is tier 2 in this game. It's classed as a heavy tank within this game. And it has a very good turret if you can stay hull down. But look at the gameplay. You need to be flying across the map to constantly be catching bases, to be killing. You can't stay hull down. Which means all these wonderful different mechanics of penetration values and armor more than anything slightly become irrelevant because you can't really be hull down. The only ideal situation you could be hull down is if you have captured two or three bases and you're sticking around one base to defend it from attacks in that sort of circumstance. Yeah, it's possibly relevant. However, if you're not winning, which to be fair, it's really easy and really quick to cap a base. Well, you need to leave your nice, strong, comfy position to make sure you win then. And you can't do anything useful with that armor because you're out in the open and you're all exposed and you've got things like a bulldog flying around which will circle a T-54 quite comfortably all day long. All these wonderful mechanics. Don't get me wrong, you've got lots of different ammo on this. You've got rockets as well. But because everything is so action-packed, so fast, there is way less emphasis on the mechanics. If you compare World of Tanks Blitz in this aspect, you use and rely on those mechanics so much, aiming for weak spots, changing your ammo to different types for certain perfect circumstances, staying hull down, side scraping, you can do all that on here. Well, to clarify, the mechanics are there to be able to do all that, but you can't do it because you have to be on the go, non-stop. Yeah, you can turn in side scrape uh, in a very quick circumstance when there's a couple rushing you, use that to your advantage. But you can't really stay there for too long and take the team out because they're just going to respawn and come back to you in high numbers. Or if they're clever, they're going to go, nah, screw you, you stay in your strong position, I'm going to go capture every base around you, and you're useless then. So yeah, there is all the mechanics there, you can see the hit skins, you can see we're doing damage with the HE at the moment, we're in a Leopard 1 by the way at tier 2. But, in this sort of circumstance, I'm trying to defend B. This is the only circumstance where I'm not running and gunning and going like a nutcase. So yeah, the short answer to that is, you can use all the different types of ammo, and you can use all this to advantage, and you will use all this to advantage, but most of the time, you're going to be going hell for leather. Next up, listen to the commentator. Base B captured. Unstoppable! Like. You can see what I mean, can't you? The commentary is very cheesy. It's proper arcade style commentary for multiple kills, which isn't directly a bad thing. It's just very, very different to what I was expecting. Very different to what of Armored War a lot of Armored Warfare fans are gonna be expecting. And if you were expecting direct competition for World of Tanks Blitz, which I was, well, it's not. They've come in at a completely different angle. So it's going to be a game which competes with it, but for a very, very different reason. It's more... YOLO. <laughs> it's more nuts. But there's less focus on the different mechanics which are in the game. As with Blitz, you rely on them every single second. And I like both, but I prefer Blitz by a long shot. And the reason I prefer Blitz is because... You have to rely on those things. There's an all or nothing playstyle. Once you're dead, you're dead. End of the match. This feels like there's more focus on being silly, just having a bit of fun. In other words, for me, it's going to be I'll play Blitz predominantly like I always have. This is no replacement for me. However, you know when you have a really bad run or you get frustrated and you just think, ah, screw this, I'm putting the game down. I'll probably come and turn this on instead and just have a couple of games of just being stupid. Next, I want to talk about the graphics, and the first thing I have to highlight is a pet peeve. Look at the back of my Leo, Sparkle. Can you see it? Twinkle, twinkle, sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> Who wants a tank which sparkles? That, by the way, is the tow cables in the sun. 
And I don't know why, but at the start of every single match, when it twinkles and sparkles, because it does it a lot at the start of a match, oh, it drove me absolutely mad. Please turn that off. I understand that they've gone for the realism level. It's just... No, it looks awful. Now, the graphics are run on Unreal Engine, which means they have absolutely huge potential. However, when I started the game, I went, wow, look at those graphics in the garage. And then when I started on the first map and you saw all the vegetation, I went, wow, look at the graphics and look at the detail on the map. But as you start to go into it then, and then you see buildings and so on and so forth, the graphics kind of feel quite unpolished, very underwhelming. I mean, my tank in itself looks shiny. I don't want a tank which looks shiny. If you look at my Leo as well, it just looks very bright. I'm going to show you the start of a match quickly, just to give you another example. Look at the tow cables. Non-stop twinkle twinkle, sparkle sparkle. Look at them. Non-stop. <laughs> I don't know why this annoys me as much as it does. Stop twinkling! <laughs> it looks so ridiculous. Honestly, it's just... No. But then the other thing, it's not just that cables then. I mean, look, there's a big pool of water. What? Where's the splash? Where's where's even the effect of going through water? There's none. And then did you see the sparks hit where we hit the ridge as we came out of the water? No. It, it's... Like I said, there's just huge potential. But... It almost just feels disappointing at the same time. There's no smoke from the exhausts, which is more important if you ask me. There's no dust from the tracks as you're driving around. Anything like that. I mean, look at my twinkly cables again. <laughs> All these things may seem very trivial, but if you ask me, they're invaluable to making or breaking the details on a game. And I know this is the first iteration of the game, but I just don't understand why things like that were left out. That's just... Base B captured. They're so important. We are it just feels like there's so much polishing and detailing needed. I mean, even the stuff on the back of the turret, it almost looks like it's got a bit of a gold tinge to it. While we're on the topic of pet peeves, I want to point something else out. And I'm not going to mention that twinkling on the back of the tank again, because there it goes again. It's the directional controls. If you look at the steering on the left hand side, you've got the three up arrows, you've got three back arrows, and then you have the semicircle left and right. Now, I love how they've gone for the realism in terms of the way the tank rocks, it accelerates, it tips back, as you slam on the brakes it will rock forward. All those things are fantastic little details. However, the steering controls don't feel very fluid. You're driving full speed. And then you press the directional left or right. If you go a little bit too far left and right and you accidentally touch those semicircles, you'll slam on the brakes and just pivot on the spot rather than maintain your momentum. It's because those semicircles are there so you can literally spin and pivot on the spot. However, it doesn't feel fluid, it doesn't feel comfortable, and the tank doesn't feel natural when you're trying to turn and you just accidentally touch that thing a little bit and it just slams on, turns sideways. And you can guarantee it happens every single time when something's pointing at you and you end up slamming on, turning your tank sideways and giving everything shooting at you the side of your tank. Even if they got rid of those arrows and just put another directional pad like they have on the other six there, it would feel a lot, be a lot better. It would feel a lot smoother. But at the moment playing it, I'm really conscious of accidentally tapping them things and completely throwing my tank in a very uncomfortable, awkward fashion. And when you go in full speed and you're trying to turn, you'd be surprised how easy it is to accidentally clip those. So in terms of gameplay, if you're looking for something with tanks which is very arcade-like, almost like a third-person shooter but in the tank, well, this is kind of what this is going to be. Nothing too serious, you can pull off some cool stuff, but it's just fun. Next thing I want to touch base on is some stuff that goes on within the garage. Now this is when I first bought the Leopard 1. Have a look at missions first. You've got a bunch of missions which give you a shed ton of rewards, and there are a lot of different rewards in here. I've just claimed all three of them, 
and now it's reset to show me another three. On top of that, you've got campaign missions. It's not a campaign, so to speak, they're just career goals, basically, and it gives you lots of different credits throughout. I also want to show you the tank upgrade system, because it works different to what we're used to as Blitz players. Rather than have modules, you have, in the Leo as an example here, there's 10 levels. As you play the game, you unlock a certain amount of XP, and you go to the next level. When you go to the next level, you can add an upgrade, and then you pick between one of these three. Once you hit select, it's then added to the tank, and the power level or power number goes up on the tank. And then that continues then, every time you unlock a level. When you get to level 10, you can unlock a special camo for the tank. So you don't have to pay for camo. You wear your camo then basically to say, hey, I've got an elite tank. Throughout the levels, you can then pick up these features. All different tanks have different features, and the features will give you extra advantages in-game. You can obviously pay to get your tank all the way elited, but it's surprising how quickly you can go up a couple of levels, especially at the lower tiers. So this is a great little system. You don't have a certain module you can unlock. That's it. You just unlock bit by bit and gradually improve the tank. Next thing I want to show you quickly is the tech tree, because it works different. You don't have to grind one set line. I've unlocked a tier 2 tank, and now I can select any tier 3 tank I like from any of the heavy, support, or assault tech trees. That will allow you to add a huge amount of diversity to your gameplay, because you don't have to just have one set line. On top of that, when you respawn in the game, you can choose between any of your tier 2 tanks or any of your tier 3 tanks. Once you get to tier 3, by the way, you can then start putting crew into your tanks, which then give you other different advantages. You can unlock crew, you can buy crew, and you can upgrade your crew. I'm going to give a quick example of all this. Here is a newly acquired Type 59. It is a tier 3 heavy tank, and I just bought this, so it's completely stock. First things first, I'm going to just show you an example of what happens when you level up. You can do this just by playing games or via earned or purchased XP. You then get three options. You can just pick an option which you want to upgrade first. So obviously I've gone with the extra acceleration. I'm going to increase the level again. You'll see we're level three now and I'm going to add an upgrade. I'm going to go with uh, min spread which basically reduces the bloom on the gun. So again increase level. Then obviously you leveled up. Then you pay again to add an upgrade. Now this time, I'm going to go with the far left, the max spread minus 30. Except you'll notice there was something else there as well, the accuracy while moving. If we now go to the features, I've unlocked one of the features under the passive system, which is reducing the aim spread by 30%. So now that that's fitted, that's an extra huge gain on the tank. Next things then, because it's a tier 3 tank, I can fit crew to this tank already came with some crew, however I have crew which have been awarded from doing a couple of missions. So I'm going to compare them, see which one gives me a better boost, or something which I think will suit this tank better. You'll see there's again extra little things you can unlock, extra little abilities, ability reload on this one, it's an extra little button, and the effect lasts for 20 seconds and then cools down for 60 seconds. I'm just going to go into a quick battle to show you the extra button now with the tier 3 tank. So, on the right hand side, just below my fire button, you will see an extra button loading up. That's my quadcopter. Basically, it improves my view range for a certain period of time. But depending on what commander you put in your tank, there are several options, including something like an artillery strike. Now the way the artillery strike would work on this game is basically you lock onto a certain target, select that target for artillery strike, and the artillery strike won't do any damage but it'll completely disable that tank's crew, along with their gun, any weapons, and any special abilities. So it pretty much just leaves it as a driving dud tank for a period of time. So yeah, to sum it up, all in all guys, it's not a bad game. I think it needs a lot of polishing, and I do genuinely think it needs a lot of polishing. But, well, I don't know, it just feels like it's missing something for me. It's left me feeling a bit annoyed because I just couldn't put my... I still can't. It just feels like something is missing. As it stands, it's an interesting alternative to Blitz in terms of it's got different game playstyle, but it'll never replace Blitz for me. And the gameplay is very enjoyable, it's very fun. 
but I just don't find it as intense as it is on Blitz or as exciting. It's more just the fun aspect. But even then, it still just feels like it's lacking something. And I think they may have tried to make the game a little bit too fast-paced. Because of the way you're capping bases within seconds and running off and going to the other bases. Especially support classes like that one on the right of me now. Which is very lightly armoured with a nasty little rocket launcher. And it caps in a couple of seconds. There's too much focus on the capping and going around like a headless chicken. And not enough focus on those mechanics they do have in the game. Which, yeah, when you're looking for something to just screw around with, a bit of arcade action is always fun. But after a while, you then start to think and start to miss, well, I want to be able to aim at weak spots. I want to be able to use my armor correctly to be able to bounce things reliably. Not... Yeah. <laughs> I think you get what I'm getting at. I don't just want to constantly be running after bases and shooting what I can in between. It just becomes a little bit monotonous, as with if it slowed down a little bit, it was a bit longer to cap the bases, and you could defend positions better and for longer. You start to rely more on the mechanics then, and less on the arcade style. So maybe there's more of a happy balance required. But that's my opinion anyway. And that's pretty much the gist of this video, so I hope you have enjoyed this preview. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.